Good afternoon. Thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon for the weekly live webinar presented by Affinity Federal Credit Union. My name is Oscar Cordova and I'm the external affairs specialist here at Affinity that is in charge of the financial education efforts for the areas that we cover. Today's topic is going to be, is going to be borrowing basics. So we're going to be learning a little bit about loans, rates, credit, and uh, everything that has to do with um, borrowing money. Um, just a quick reminder, my, this webinar is being recorded and I will be sharing the link for you guys to rewatch this webinar at your leisure. Also, if you guys have any question during the webinar, please make, make use of the Q&A option on your panel. And I'll be more than happy to address those questions at the end of the webinar. With that said, let's, let's get to it. All right, so a quick disclaimer before we start. The information provided to all of you this afternoon is for information purposes only. It is not intended to be legal, tax, or financial advice. Every person's circumstances are different. And if you guys are in need to talk to someone in regards of any of these matters, feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to put you in touch with somebody that can address your needs. Very good. So a quick quote before we start. All loans in the eyes of honest borrowers must eventually be repaid. All credit is debt. And this is important for us to, to understand because when I was growing up, when I was 18 or 19 and I got, and I got my first credit card, um, I didn't get a chance to attend any of these seminars or webinars that explain what credit is. And I, in, in my mind, I thought that credit is just pretty much money that yes, you have to repay back, but I, the concept of repaying back was not so much important. Um, I thought it was just money to be used. And um, very early in, in, in my life, I got in, in a lot of trouble, um, debt wise. Uh, good thing that I started working for a financial institution. I was able to learn a lot of these concepts early on as well. And I was able to um, rail back the trend that had derailed early in my life. And uh, I was able to fix my credit and, and put strategies together to become a responsible consumer in regards of credit. So um, it says here in the eyes of the honest borrower. And, and what that means is that, of course, there are people out there that take out loans with the intention of not paying it back. So, but we're not gonna be talking about that. That's kind of like more into the uh, ID theft and, and dishonesty topics kind of thing. We're gonna be talking more about what credit is and what, um, what, uh, what are some of the basic strategies to take out a loan and, and, and make sure that we take care of our credit by making the payments on time. So what is credit? Credit is money borrowed, commonly referred to as a loan. Okay, Credit is the promise to pay back the money borrowed plus interest. So interest is what the, 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 the I don't wanna say a fee, but the, the charge um, that is, is in place by financial institutions for them to lend you this money, for, for you to have the access to borrow and use their money for your own benefit and purposes, there, there's this, this, this charge that they, they, they put on. And, and, and rate could be um, many different things. You know, I mean, there's a range of rates that could be as low as 2.2% or 1.5% all the way up to 30%. Some credit cards are out there are 24, 27%. And, and, and that's a lot of money to pay. And more if you, are, if you have a couple of thousand dollars in in, in, in debt for with some of these credit cards. So different forms of credit, secure loans, unsecured loans. So secure loans are loans that uh, have some kind of collateral, mortgages, auto loans. Unsecured loans will be your credit cards and your, and your personal loans, loans that um, are done based on your credit profile and your income and other, and other other factors that can go into underwriting alone, but they do not require any collateral. Okay, um, these these loans will have a, either a fixed rate, an adjustable rate, 
Uh, and revolving loans will be kind of your lines of credit or your credit cards. And those are loans that have no end date. And I'll go into uh, more detail in, 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 a, in a couple of slides. So the importance of credit. Why do we want to have a good credit score? Uh, credit is useful in times of an, of an emergency. So a lot of people are afraid of taking out a credit card because they know that credit cards may um, translate into trouble or debt. And it's not that, that um, credit is bad or good. It's just knowing how to use it. So if you happen to have a credit card that you have for an emergency use, this credit card could be very useful in the, ev in the event of an emergency. Because again, if you, if you find yourself in a bind and you may not have the funds in your bank account to pay for what needs to be paid to get out of this bind, a credit card will, will definitely help you out. And it gives you the ability to pay the amount over time. Always keeping in mind that there's interest to be paid, but it gives you the flexibility of getting out of a tight situation and be able to pay, pay it over time. Credit can, can be more convenient than carrying cash. So if you have credit cards, if you were to lose your wallet, you can easily call the financial institution or your credit union to report your cards um, lost. They'll stop the cards and issue you a new one. And if there were any transactions that were that were that were that came through the card while the, your card was not in your possession, after a brief investigation, you may uh, you will get those funds back because you can you it will be proven that you, it was not you who made those charges. So there is some kind of recourse when with credit um, compared to to cash that if you were to lose it, um, there is no recourse. Cash is cash, and if you lose your cash, then who are you gonna go to to try to get the cash back, right? And also allows you to make larger larger purchases such as car or a house. Um, that that could be very well the goal of many of you out there to be able to purchase your first home or be able to upgrade your vehicle or buy your first car. So um, credit, uh, unless you have the amount of money to be able to pay for these items outright credit is going to be useful because you're going to eventually apply for a loan in order to acquire these items. All right. Um, so forms of credit, secure and unsecured. I, I went very briefly uh, over this in the previous slide, but I'll explain briefly what it is. Determining if a loan is secure and secured is as simple as determining if, the, if there is collateral, some kind of security. A loan is secured if there's some kind of collateral involved, home, auto, or cash, right? Unsecured loans are your credit cards or your personal loans that have no collateral. All right, so this is very important. Lenders may offer better rates for secure loans because the lender may be able to recover some of their loss by repossessing or foreclosing that collateral in the event the client does not pay the money back. And this is a very important because there is some recourse for the financial institution in the event that the uh, client or member um, cannot make the payments. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you are unable to make these payments, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you call your financial institution, call your credit union, your credit card company, and advise of what's going on. Nowadays with COVID-19 and all of the different pandemic, uh, um, um, the pandemic that we're going through and the different um, economic circumstances uh, that a lot of people find themselves into, which, which, are, which can be losing their job or getting their hours cut. Banks have, banks, credit unions, financial institutions have put in place um, different processes to help the clients that are going through rough times. So it's always good that if you find yourself that you cannot make a, a payment, call them up, explain what's going on, and perhaps they can um, forgive the payment for that month uh, or and add it to the end of the loan or give you some kind of payment plan, put you on a payment plan. Uh, and this will protect your credit. But if you do not give them a call and you don't do and you don't advice of what's going on in your financial um, situation, 
then the financial institution has no way of knowing what's going on, right? Good. Now, installment loans. What is, what is an installment loan? Installment loans are paid over a predetermined period of time. The payment amount is the same always every month and the interest rate is fixed. So these are your auto loans or your mortgages. When you take out a loan for an auto or for a house, you take it out for a, a certain amount of years. So an auto loan, you take out the loan for five years or six years or seven. An, a home loan, you take it out for 50, 20 or 25 or 30 years. But you know there is an end date. So you know that at the end of the five years for an auto loan, if you make your payments on time every month, at the end of those five years, you'll be done and over with, with, the, with, with the loan. You'll get the title of the vehicle in your possession and you don't have to make any more payments. The rate is also fixed. So the rate never changes. Whatever you agreed upon when you made the purchase, that's going to be your rate for the, the, the length of the loan, okay? So when considering an installment loan, such an auto loan, stop and consider um, these things. Can I manage to pay this loan back? Will this payment drain my emergency fund? And can I have for repairs if the vehicle breaks down? Those are, these are uh, questions that you should be asking yourself before buying a vehicle. Now, installment loans are great for budgeting, uh, for budgeting purposes because as I mentioned before, the, the payment amount never changes. So if you have created a budget in your financial picture, the, the, this payment will always be the same compared to, for example, a credit card. But depending on usage, the payment may be higher or lower. So then you have to make adjustments to your budget, depending on the, the loan amount, um, the payment amount, I'm sorry. So for an installment loan, it is great because you don't have to worry about adjusting your budget, the payment will always be the same. Now, it mentions here emergency fund. So one part of a budget is to have an emergency fund and an emergency fund is for emergencies, hence the name, right? So it's important that the payment that you're gonna acquire or the new payment that you're gonna get is not going to drain this fund. The fund is, 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 is designed to for you to keep there I want to say perhaps one or two months of uh, of living expenses in case something was to happen. So I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple of years back um, when the government closed down, um, there were a whole bunch of um, uh, government employees that had to keep on working, but were not getting paid. And that went for like two to three months. Uh, at the end of, of the, the, the crisis, they, everybody got their money, everybody got paid. But in the meantime, if you work for the government, how do you pay your obligations? How do you buy food? How do you um, pay the rent? So that's the whole purpose of an emergency fund, having some money saved up um, in an account uh, that you don't touch and that to be used on a, in, in, on a rainy day, okay? Very good. All right, uh, another form of credit. So revolving loans, I mentioned the lines of credit or credit cards. So revolving loans are a monthly payment that changes depending on, on the interest rate and the balance owed. Credit cards have, are the most common of revolving loans and the uh, credit, card, credit cards and lines of credit usually are not secured for by any collateral. So credit cards and lines of credit have no end date. So it's not like you don't open a credit card for, for five years, uh, a term for five years. You open a credit card for um, uh, an, as long as you wanna have it. Um, for example, I still have, I mentioned earlier that I had a little bit of a rough time when I was young, 18 or 19 with my credit, but I still kept the first credit card I ever opened. And it was a good thing that when I paid off all of this debt, I did not close it. Somehow I didn't close it. And a lot of people are under the misconception that in order for them to improve their credit, they need to bring their credit cards down to zero and close them out. And actually that's having a, a, an opposite effect if you want to improve your credit. Actually it's hurting your credit because if you're closing out a, a piece of credit that is, it, uh, you've had it for a long time, you're pretty much erasing the credit 
payment history that you've had with that account since you had it from your, from your credit profile. So that may hurt your credit. If it's a credit card that you don't pay anything, if it's a credit card that it's absolutely free to have, and you, you think that it's just the, the, the interest rate is, is too high, don't close it out. Just bring it down to zero. You're not paying anything for it to have it. Use it once a year for something very small, a cup of coffee or getting gas, pay it off, and then put it away in a drawer and don't use it at all. Um, that credit card that I mentioned to you guys that I had when I was 18, I only use it on my birthday. And, and why do I do that? That's because credit card companies, um, every now and then they will um, review all of their accounts and accounts that have not been used for a long time, they will go ahead and close out without you even requesting it or knowing. They'll just close out the card and send you a letter saying, we close it out for non-usage. So again, you don't want that line of credit to be closed and more if you're not paying anything for it, if there's no annual fee. So make sure that you use it once a year for something very small and, and pay it off and then don't use it for, again. And this will be able to, to keep that record of credit, which is the, your longest piece of credit intact in your credit profile and, and, and help you with your credit score. Um, I, am, I don't mind sharing my age with all of you. I'm 41 years old and that credit card I, I got when I was 18. So how long has that been? It's been over 22 years. Um, so as you guys can see, I've had it for a long time, but I don't need, I don't use it because it's, 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 the interest rate is very high because it was my first piece of credit. So usually when you don't have credit, you end up paying high interest rates. And as you go along um, in life, uh, your credit will improve and you'll be able to replace that high interest credit with better credit with a lower interest rate, okay? Good. Um, another form of credit is home loans, so mortgages. These are the loans that you will get for the purchase of a property. So um, a mortgage, a loan to purchase a, uh, a home, Home refinance loans are uh, loans that are used to pay off existing home loans with another loan. And home equity loan is when you use some of the equity on your property to borrow against it. And uh, usually you, when you take out home equity loans are um, one of the most famous reasons to take one out is for home improvement. So many of you may ask yourself, what's equity? So equity is the difference between the value of uh, the house and what you owe on it. So very simple, in very simple terms, if you have a house that is worth, the value of it is worth 200,000 and your mortgage or what you owe on it is 150,000, that means that you have $50,000 available in equity. It means that there is some kind of value that you can borrow against um, to take some money out and, and, and you can use it for, for any, any reason. Um, dev, debt consolidation, you can use it for, for home improvements, to purchase a vehicle, college tuition. There's many different reasons why people take out home equity loans. Great. All right, so fees and interest. So these are things that usually come with rates, with, with rates, with loans. So fees are the amount charged by the financial institutions to review an application or service an account. Maintenance fees, application fees, or late fees. Late fees are pretty much what they are, right? If you pay your, make a payment late, then there may be a late fee assessed. Maintenance fees and application fees usually are for certain um, uh, kinds of loans. Application fees are very common with mortgage loans. Uh, and why? Because a mortgage loan, there's a lot involved in the underwriting of a mortgage loan. So the reason why there's a fee is because the in financial institution wants to make sure that the, 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 the client or the person applying for it is serious about it. And it's not just applying for to apply. Because again, there is a lot of resources and a lot of hours that go, go um, along with with the underwriting of a mortgage loan. Um, but again, if the, um, if, the, uh, if the person has some kind of 
skin in the game, they're more they're like more likely to continue with the loan and and and, and just drop everything off and 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 not continue with the process. Now, um, uh, Affinity for their mortgage products, we do not have any uh, application fees or underwriting fees, uh, and that's a benefit that all of you as members have in the event of buying a property in the future. The reason why I mentioned these fees is because that's us, that's Affinity. But if you were to apply for any other bank or financial institution for a mortgage, just be aware that there may be an application fee or maintenance fees attached to it, okay? Now, interest is the amount of money a financial institution charges for extending the credit. And that's what I'm, I mentioned before. Uh, interest uh, is what the, the, the bank or credit, or credit union will charge um, to allow you to use their money, okay? Now there's two kinds of rates uh, of interest. There's a fixed rate and a variable rate. Fixed rate is the rate that never changes throughout the whole loan. It's, it, it, it remains the same. And variable, variable rates are the rates that may change during the term of the loan, um, depending on, 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 the, um, on the market. Okay, so usually, um, well, not usually, credit cards have variable rates. So depending on how the market behaves, your rate may go up um, very little, but still there is a chance of, of a fluctuation in the rate for credit cards. All right, so credit worthiness. When you are going to apply for a loan, there are, there are C, uh, it's called the five C's of credit. And this is what financial institutions, banks and credit unions look at before approving your loan. And so we'll go over these five different C's of credit. The first one is character. So when you apply for a loan, um, they'll take a look at your credit uh, character and how do they see what kind of character do you have? Well, this is determined by your credit score and your credit history, your credit report. Your credit report is a snapshot in time of your credit behavior, of how you pay your creditors back. So if you make your payments on time, if you're not late, if you um, keep your balances under 30% of usage uh, of, of the lines of credit, that is going to say a lot about you. And People may say, people may say, well, if you don't know me. You, how can the bank make a decision on my character if they don't know me? But your behavior will will speak volumes about who you are. So if you're making your payments on time and you keep your balances low, that shows that you are somebody responsible with your credit. That instead of you, instead of your credit um, managing you, you are managing your credit, right? So character is, is based on your credit score. Next is capacity. So based on your income and other financial obligations, will you be able to pay back the loan? So capacity is income. When you apply for a loan, and I don't want to say credit cards, because usually, usually credit cards do not require pay stubs or, or tax, tax returns. But if you're applying for a, an auto loan or a mortgage where you have to provide proof of income, this is your capacity. You're giving proof that you, earn, you are earning enough and your earning potential is there for you to be able to pay back the loan. So capacity deals with income. Next one is collateral. So collateral is, are there anything that you can, you can put up um, as, a, as, a, as, as, a, as a security for the loan? So for example, you're applying for a personal loan and your credit may not be there, but it's your borderline. But then all of a sudden you remember that you have, you have paid off your vehicle and you have the title to it. You can offer this title to the financial institution as collateral for, for you to improve your, finan your, 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 your status and get this loan approved because you're, you're putting up something tangible uh, for the loan. Usually this happens with auto loans and mortgages. The mortgage deed or the auto, loan, the auto title will be the tangible asset that will be uh, securing the loan 
and that can be claimed in the event that you default on the payments. Next, capital. Do you have savings or assets that can be claimed or if you don't, uh, if you don't make your payments? So what kind of relationship do you have with the company? You may have um, a savings account or a, or a CD that uh, can be considered part of the loan in the event that you default on your on your payments and, can, and, this, and this, this can be claimed as part of uh, um, payment or, or, or to try to make good on that balance that you owe. Lastly, conditions. How do you intend to use the money? What is the money used for? So that's another, another very important thing, um, thing that banks and financial institutions look at because they wanna make sure that you're using the money correctly and more for like, for example, home improvements. If you're gonna start doing an addition, once you disclose what you're gonna be using the, the money for, then um, home equity loan may not be the best solution for you. A home equity line of credit will be because of your intentions. So a condition or the, the, the intent of what you're gonna be using the money for is always also very important. So credit score. So what items are considered when you're calculating a credit score? So here's a brief um, um, pie chart kind of thing that can show you the different, how uh, your behavior is weighed when, you're, when, when the credit agency is computing your credit score. So payment history is the most important thing on a credit, uh, on a credit report. Um, amounts owed, also very important, 30%. So between the two, we're at 65%. Payment history and amount amounts owed. Then after that, you have length of credit history. This is when I mentioned not to close your oldest credit card if you can, because it's uh, the length of credit history also has in, um, an, an effect on your credit report. New credit and types of credit in use, both at 10%. So installment and revolving. We already went through what these two kinds of loans are, right? All right, so also you, the range. So when you're we're talking about credit score, a lot of people is like, oh, I have a 700 credit score. What does that mean? So this is kind of like the range of, of the scores out there. And there are three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And they will score you in, in this range from 300 to 850. And uh, as you guys can see, there, there are different milestones throughout this, this, this graph where you will go from being poor to fair, from fair to good, and from good to excellent. Now, this is kind of like for you guys to visualize what the, uh, the ranges are, but this may not be true with everybody. So different banks will run different promotions based on different numbers of credit score. So say for example, right here, it shows he, I'm showing you that a, 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 a score of 740 and above is excellent. It is, but for example, um, I don't know, a car company, Lexus. Lexus is running a promotion for 0% interest on their vehicles for well-qualified buyers. That's usually what they say on TV, right? When you read that small writing, a well-qualified buyer could be somebody eight, uh, I'm sorry, 800 or 780 and above. So at that point for that promotion from that bank or from that vendor, excellent is 780, it's not 740. So you guys have to um, understand that, that, that what I'm showing you guys now are kind of averages but it may not be the same for everything that is out there. So if you're at 750, right now, if you look at this, you could say, oh, wow, so I have excellent score. And then you go and apply for, for a loan that requires you to, for you to get the best rate requires for you to have 780. You may be kind of like deflated because you didn't get the best score, even though you may think that you have excellent score per my slide, you know? So it's, I just wanna make sure that you guys understand that, that what I'm showing you is kind of like an average. It all depends on what 
your intentions are in when applying for a loan and what kind of promotions are out there. So make sure you guys read the, the, the terms and conditions of everything that is out there before applying, okay? How to, how to get a copy of your credit report. So you are entitled to one free credit report from each one of the three credit bureaus every year, okay? And you can request, request the three credit bureaus through either calling uh, that 800 number, which is the uh, annualcreditreport.com number. You can go visit their website or, um, and then um, if you visit annualcreditreport.com, that website is kind of like a portal where you can access the three credit bureaus uh, for free. And you can rest assured that this website is not gonna offer you any kind of like credit monitoring service or anything like that. Many others are out there do. So make sure that you guys go to this website if you guys don't wanna pay any, anything extra to access your credit reports. The last way is contacting each credit bureau directly. So here are the, uh, the websites for each one of them, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. You can go in directly into all of these web, uh, websites and, and acquire your credit, credit report there. The first one every, every year is for free. And I believe there, there's a minimal charge, perhaps like $10 to get any, 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 other, any other credit report. I highly recommend that you guys um, check your credit at least once every six months. Why do I say that? Um, because when you check your credit and you see that there is something that is off, something being reported that you don't recognize, that may be the first red flag in catching identity theft. Um, so as you guys know, and this is another topic that I, we also present in, in these weekly webinars, but Identity theft is when somebody steals your identity for to get a credit card or a loan or something like that. So if you check your credit report once a year, um, it, and, and then you are a victim of identity theft, it may take you up to a year to find something that you could have caught earlier. So um, my, it's, my, it's my recommendation. You guys don't have to do it but at least do it once a year which, because it's free. But I, in, my, in my situation, I do check my, my credit report every six months just to make sure that everything reported is accurate and that um, there are no funny business there, okay? Now also, there's a, there's a website called Credit Karma, which is absolutely free as well. And you guys can set up a profile there and, and, and it'll give you information about your, what's being reported on your credit report. Um, just with Credit Karma, just the credit score that you see for your file, just, just don't go buy it because they use another credit model to get that score. That will not be the score that a bank will see or a credit union will see when you're applying for a loan. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But if you wanna just use it for information purposes, just to see what's being reported, uh, by all means, Credit Karma is another way for you to take a look at what what is in your credit file. All right, so you, this is a quick checklist of credit decisions. So in order to apply for a loan, it's important to know the answers to the following questions. And these are questions that will be asked uh, when you're applying for a loan. Um, how long have you been in your job? How much money do you make? What are your monthly expenses? How much money do you have in your accounts? Have you had credit in the past? How many credit accounts do you have? Have you ever been denied credit? Have you ever filed for bankruptcy? And have you made any late payments? Now, many of these questions, the answers to many of these questions will be answered through the, the underwriting process. When, when, the, when the credit union pulls your credit, they'll be able to see if, you have, if you've been denied credit if you file for bankruptcy, if you've made any late payments. But just knowing these answers looks like you've done your due diligence and that you know your financial picture, okay? So it's always good to know at all times the answers to all of these questions, okay? Now, before applying for credit, you also need to ask yourself a couple of questions um, to make sure that you're doing the right thing. 
So do I need this loan and do I need it now? Okay. Can I wait until I have more cash to pay for it? How much more will I pay if I buy this on credit? And remember about rates, about interest, and about any other fees that may be part of the credit card. Remember, remember those. So you want to know or kind of like have an idea of how much more will you have to pay if you buy the item on a credit card. Can I afford the monthly payment? That's a given. You want to make sure that you prepare for the, the, the payments that you're going to be making going forward. What is the total cost of this loan? Are there any fees? And what is the APR, the annual percentage rate? And lastly, this is very important. Is this a want instead of a need? And a lot of people, if a lot of people ask themselves this question before buying something more, uh, they'll, be, they'll, they'll be able to plan their finance, financial picture better. Because sometimes, and I've, and, I, and I've been a victim of it, sometimes we buy stuff that we don't really need. It's just a want for the time being. And we feel great because we bought something that we like. But that something may lose value or may not be that impo important to you as, 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 quickly, as, as quickly as a week later. You may think, oh, you know what? I, don't really, I didn't really need this, but I already bought it, right? So ask yourself that question before you buy anything on credit. Is this a want instead of a need? If it's a need, then it's a need. By all means, buy it because you need it. But if it's a want, just think, stop and think about it. Can, I, can this wait? Or do I really want it now? Okay. All right. Uh, tips for managing your credit. Managing your credit is very important. Follow these tips to help you with a good credit score. If possible, pay off the entire credit card balance each month, if possible. If you use credit, try to pay it off every month. If you do that, you're not paying any interest whatsoever. Try to pay more than the minimum in order to reduce the total interest paid. This will, this will reduce the interest due. So if you pay more than the minimum, you're making payments towards principal and you're actually helping yourself in paying less interest in the future. So a quick example, if you purchase a, a TV for 500, using a credit card at 15%, 15% is average. There's a credit card out there at 22, 24, 27%. Uh, it will cost you 790, almost 790, and it will take you about six and a half years to pay off if you only pay the minimum monthly payment. So imagine you would pay more than half of what the TV cost you and take you six and a half years. By the time you pay, you're done paying this off, you're probably gonna need a new TV. So just a quick example, if you make more than the minimum payment, you'll be paying this off faster, okay? Also, you wanna pay on time to avoid fees and that's, that's pretty much a given, right? You wanna, you wanna make, make sure you're make, making your payments on time. Uh, if you cannot pay on time, Call your creditor. That's what I mentioned before. You want to let them know of what's going on. And um, think about the cost of uh, between purchasing an item with cash rather than with credit. Okay. All right. Very good. So this concludes my presentation this afternoon. So at this point, I would like to open up the floor to any one of you um, that may have a question that I can answer. Um, while you guys type those questions, I just want to quickly remind everybody that this webinar is being recorded and I will be sharing the, 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 the link to rewatch this presentation um, this afternoon. Okay. Um, also, if you, um, I encourage everybody to join us next week for the weekly, weekly webinar. I believe next week the, 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 um, the topic will be on. Um, Cybersecurity is going to has to have to do with, with um, finding out what kind of frauds are out there, what kind of scams are out there um, um, through the computer. And it's going to be presented by someone from our risk department. So I highly encourage everybody to sign up for that, for that webinar as well. I hope to see you there. In the follow-up email that I'll be sending, I will be um, including the link to, to register for this webinar as well. Hopefully you guys can make it. All right, let me take a look at if there's any, any questions at the moment. Okay, I do not see any questions at this moment. So uh, at this point, I would like to bring this webinar to a close. I wanna thank everybody for attending. 
Uh, it's been great. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, I hope to see you guys next week. And if you guys have any questions that you guys may think of after the webinar and after watching the, the, the recording, feel free to send them over and I'll be more than happy to address them for you, okay? Again, my name is Oscar Cordoba, External Affairs Specialist here at Affinity. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye.